Hello, my name is Tara Sorabi. I'm going to talk about the drug therapy for hypertension in chapter 28 and, and uh, review the hypertension by itself. Uh, as you see the objectives, we're going to describe factors that control blood pressure. And we are going to identify patient at risk, discuss non-pharmacological measures to control hypertension, and review a few of uh, drug that is used for hypertension management. I think I have posted the uh, PowerPoint for you, and I uh, wish that you guys could come up with the answer for the blank area and the first one is arterial blood pressure force excreted on arterial uh, is a force that, that ex, uh, exerted on the atrial walls by blood flow and the next one blood pressure normally remains constant because of the homeostasis mechanism that adjusts blood flow to meet tissue needs the number three there are two uh, blank area uh, i will ask you to complete it the two major determinants of arterial blood pressure are the first one is cardiac output or systolic pressure and peripheral vascular resistance or diastolic pressure Commonly, uh, oh, hypertension is a common chronic disorder uh, in United States that is affecting uh, almost 50 to 60 million of the population. And it increases the risk of myocardial infarction and congestive heart pressure, heart failure. It increases the cerebral infarction and hemorrhage and renal disease. Uh, I will show you in the class the video that is available for hypertension and you will uh, get a better understanding of that. Uh, blood pressure reflects the force exerted on arterial walls by uh, blood flow and the blood pressure normally remains constant because of what you think, because of what? because of homeostasis and that adjust blood flow to meet tissue needs. There are two major determinants of arterial blood pressure that um, controls the blood pressure. One is our cardiac output and the other one is peripheral vascular resistance. Cardiac output is, as you see in here, is uh, equal to heart rate and the stroke volume. What is the stroke volume? Usually, uh, a stroke volume is the amount of blood that ejected with each heartbeat. Thus, cardiac output depends on the force of myocardial contraction, blood volume, and other factors. Peripheral vascular resistance is determined by local blood flow and the degree of constriction or dilation in arterioles and arteries, which is called also vascular tone. How the blood pressure regulates and uh, what is the overall regulation? Overall regulation of blood pressure involves a complex interacting overlapping network of hormonal, neural, and vascular mechanisms and any condition that affects heart rate, stroke volume, or peripheral vascular resistance affects uh, arterial blood pressure. Many of these mechanisms are compensatory affect that attempt to restore balance when hypotension or hypertension, of course. Uh, in your child textbook, there is a box, and uh, box uh, number 28.1, uh, that uh, describes the more mechanism of the blood pressure regulation. Uh, when uh, hypotension 
uh, and inadequate tissue perfusion, of course, the central nervous system uh, active, is activated and produces secretion of epinephrine and norepinephrine by the adrenal medulla constriction and constriction of blood vessel in the skin, gastrointestinal tract, and kidney, and stimulation of beta-adrenergic receptors in the heart, which uh, increases heart rate and force uh, myocardial contraction. All of these mechanisms act to increase blood pressure and tissue perfusion, especially of the brain and heart. Uh, when uh, 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 arterial blood pressure uh, increases, uh, which causes hypertension, kidney excrete more fluid um, and thus increases urine output. Fluid loss reduces both extracellular fluid volume and blood volume, and therefore decreases blood volume, reduces venous blood flow to heart, and therefore decreases cardiac output. Decreased cardiac output reduces arterial blood pressure and the vascular endothelium produ produces vasodilating substance, for example, nitric oxide or prostatycline, which also this reduce the blood pressure. Hypertension is persistently high blood pressure that results from abnormalities in regulatory mechanisms. It is usually defined as a systolic pressure above 140 millimeter mercury or a diastolic pressure above 90 millimeter mercury on multiple blood pressure measurement. The cause of primary hypertension or essential hypertension are not known or are unknown. This is only partially true. Generally, genetic variations and inherited behavioral and environmental factors may increase blood pressure. These include obesity, high alcohol intake, insulin resistance, high salt intake in salt sensitive people, aging, uh, sedentary lifestyle, and stress. Primary hypertension makes up 90 to 95 percent of known cases and usually appropriate therapy controls primary hypertension. Secondary hypertension sometimes can be cured by managing the underlying condition or cause. The, in this slide you can see the classification of hypertension. Uh, the class 1 normal blood pressure is 120 systolic and diastolic 80 to 89. Pre-hypertension systolic is between 120 to 139 and diastolic 80 to 89. A stage 1 systolic is uh, between 140 to 159 or diastolic 90 to 99. And a stage 2 hypertension systolic is over or beyond 60 or and diastolic is higher than 100. For pathophysiology of hypertension, I have provided you with a very nice video and I ask you guys to watch that video by clicking on the hyperlinks and make sure to understand the pathophysiology of hypertension. In brief, profoundly alters cardiovascular function causes uh, increase in cardiac work, workload and also uh, causing myocardial hypertrophy and eventually to heart failure. Initially may produce no symptoms, um, but symptoms eventually reflect target organ and damage like the heart, brain, and kidney. And what is hypertensive emergency is the 
extension of malignant hypertension, um, which causes cerebral hemorrhage, and dissecting aortic aneurysm and renal disease. Symptoms usually are severe headache, nausea, and vomiting, visual disturbances or broad vision, neurologic disturbances, and disorientation and change or decline of level of consciousness. Uh, there are uh, different type of uh, medication that is used to uh, manage the hypertension. And, uh, number one, angiotensin converting enzyme or ACE inhibitors. Number two, angiotensin two receptor blockers and anti-adrenergic uh, calcium channel blocker, diuretics, and direct vasodilators. I have provided you uh, with the drug card and I uh, expect you guys to go ahead and find about the action of each medication, the use, intra contraindicators, uh, adverse effects, and the use in uh, a special population like patient with impaired renal, uh, renal uh, and hepatic impairment and children and uh, elderly. Um, what are the principles of antihypertensive therapy? We want to make sure we achieve and maintain a blood pressure l um, below 140 over um, 90 millimeter mercury. If goal not achievable, lowering blood pressure to any extent is beneficial. So we want to make sure really we work on that blood uh, pressure and um, to make sure to manage that hypertension. And also we can ask the patient to change their lifestyle or modify their lifestyle like working on their weight and take uh, reducing uh, sodium intake uh, and physical activity regularly and moderate alcohol intake and uh, if they are smoker a smoking session cessation and the guideline for management uh, factors to be considered uh, usually we have to make sure the, the age of the patient ethnicity Con uh, committant and cardiovascular disorders, if there is any cardiovascular disorder or any underlying uh, cause for that blood uh, hypertension. Uh, we should start the medication in lowest available dose to find out if that uh, is benefit to patient. Change medication groups instead of increasing the dose if the first medication is uh, ineffective and in many patients, uh, they require two plus or more medication for adequate blood pressure control. A medication, uh, if they need to stop the medication, they have to titrate and uh, for every individual uh, patient to make sure that a uh, patient won't be at risk. And in a special population, we have to make sure we know the um, type of medication that is used for various ethnic groups, children, older adult, patient with renal and hepatic impairment, and patients who are going under the surgery, any critical illnesses, and home care and herbal and dietary supplement that they are using. I hope you guys uh, can work on the drug card and uh, make it sure to um, finalize your drug card and if you have any question you can ask in the classroom.